In this chapter, you'll start your first hands-on experience with your new IBM personal computer. First, we'll review the way you should have the hardware interconnected for proper operation. You'll connect your keyboard and video monitor and do the power-on test of your system. Right now, we'll interconnect your keyboard and video monitor. Be sure that you don't have any power cords plugged into any electrical outlets at this time. We'll show you when to plug them in. In this computer, we have an IBM monochrome display adapter and the IBM color graphics adapter in their respective slots. Turn your computer around so you can work on the back panel where the connectors are. Now, find the video cable that comes with your IBM video monitor. It'll be the cable that has six pin connectors enclosed in a frame like a D on both ends. If you look carefully, you can count nine pinholes inside of the D-shaped enclosure. If you're using the standard IBM monochrome display card, your dealer will usually have put it in slot number two for you. Plug the end of the cable with a nine pin D connector coming from the monitor into the matching connector on the back panel of your computer. Again, be sure you don't have the main power cable to your computer itself plugged into any electrical power. Your IBM monochrome display will get its AC power from the connector on the back of your computer. Plug the electrical power connector from the IBM monitor into the auxiliary power connector on the far left of the back panel of your computer. If you're not using an IBM monochrome display, you can use another manufacturer's black and white or green screen video monitor. If this is the case, find the cable that has phono connectors on both ends. It'll look just like those cables used on video cassette or stereo equipment as we show here. Plug one end of the phono cable into the phono jack on the back of your monitor. If there is a switch labeled 75 ohms or terminate, be sure to switch to the 75 ohm or terminate position. Your dealer usually will have installed your color graphics monitor adapter into slot number three. It will look like this. If it is in another slot, it will still operate properly. Now plug the other end of the phono cable into the phono jack on the back of your computer, as we show here. Monitors and display devices other than those made by IBM will have to be plugged into a properly grounded outlet other than the power connector on the back of your computer. Find the AC plug for your monitor now and plug it into such an outlet. If you're using any other kind of display device, such as a TV receiver or a RGB color display, refer to the option sections of your guide to operations manual for the proper installation and connection procedures. Now connect the connector coming from the keyboard into the connector labeled keyboard on the back of your computer. You'll have to turn it until the pins feel like they match up and the notch on the top of the plug matches. Then push firmly in. Be sure you use the left-hand keyboard connector, not the right-hand cassette connector. Don't ever force any connectors on. If they don't feel like they should go in with moderate pressure, you probably don't have them aligned correctly. In that case, take a second look. The keyboard connector is a very handy feature of your IBM personal computer. It allows you to reposition the keyboard to suit your own comfort and is a feature not found on most personal computers. In fact, you can even change the angle of your keyboard as it sits on a table by turning the keyboard foot controls located at the right and left side of the keyboard. To raise the feet again, simply press in the control as you turn it clockwise. Finally, be sure the power switch on the right-hand side of your computer is turned off, as we show here. Plug the rectangular end of the AC power cord into the receptacle on the left-hand side of the back connector panel of your IBM personal computer. Again, make sure the power switch on the right-hand side of your computer is turned off, and if it is, plug it into a properly grounded three-pronged electrical outlet. If you have to use an extension cord for the computer power cord, make sure it's the kind with a three-prong connector and that it's properly grounded. 
Notice that we have plugged into this box. This is a surge protector and is available from most computer dealers. It is used to protect your computer from high voltage power surges that may come through your power cords from time to time. These surges can cause a loss of data or completely stop a program from running properly. In some cases, they can actually damage integrated circuit chips. A recent study showed that the average business or home receives about three such hits, as they are called, a day. Now position your computer, monitor, and keyboard in a way that is most comfortable for you to operate. By now, you should have everything connected together and plugged into electrical power. In order for you to use this video program comfortably for the remainder of your training, you should have your computer system and your video player and TV set arranged something like this. In this program, we'll be using two disk drives. We assume that you have at least one disk drive installed in your system. If you don't have a second drive now and are planning to add one in the future, your dealer can help you with installation. Since most users like to have printed copies of the work they do with their personal computers, a wide range of printers have become available. Some printers require what's known as a serial interface adapter, others a parallel interface adapter. Serial means that the data is fed to the printer one character after another. Parallel means that the data used to tell the printer to form characters is fed on eight wires at the same time. Later, in Chapter 7, you'll learn the significance of eight bits of data. For now, just think of an eight-lane freeway feeding traffic into a city as opposed to one country lane handling traffic one car at a time. If you have a printer with your system, your dealer should have installed the correct adapter card for you and configured your system for the type of printer you have. If you have an IBM 80 CPS matrix printer or other parallel printer, you can use the combined monochrome display and parallel printer adapter that we discussed earlier to connect your printer to your computer. If you have a serial printer, you'll need a serial adapter card plugged into one of the five peripheral slots. If you want further information, check your guide to operations. There should be an insert in the printer or options section that came with your printer adapter card. Of course, your dealer can give you more help, too. Now it's time to turn on your computer. The first thing you'll do is perform the power on self-test to make sure that your computer is functioning properly after shipping. The self-test will take anywhere from 3 to 45 seconds, depending on how much memory your computer has. The self-test is a very useful feature. First, it eliminates the chance of damaging any data that you may have stored on a disk. Second, if there is a problem, it will help a service technician identify it. Go ahead now and reach around the right-hand side of your computer and turn the power switch on and watch your display screen. Then in about four seconds, a small horizontal white line will appear in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. This line is called the cursor. The cursor will become more familiar to you very soon. After a short time, you'll hear a short beep, and the left-hand disk drive will begin to whir. It will stop, then whir again for several seconds. Then the following display will show on your screen. Now is a good time to adjust the brightness and contrast controls on the data display. Those are the two knobs to the right of the screen. Adjust the controls so you can read the display clearly. If you didn't get any or all of these three responses, the cursor on the screen, the short beep, or the display, you may have a problem with your system. If this is the case, turn the power to your computer off and wait 30 seconds before you turn the power back on. Some IBM PCs will reset in a shorter time. You'll have to experiment to find the shortest recycle time for your computer. For now, wait about 30 seconds. Then turn the power switch back on. Watch and listen for those three responses. If you still don't have any one or all three responses, you'll have to run through the problem determination procedures that are contained in your guide to operations. Along with these procedures, there's an excellent diagnostics program that comes on a disk in the back of your guide to operations. The guide can give you more information about running this disk program if it's necessary. 
These procedures are an excellent way to pinpoint the location and or cause of a problem that can be very helpful to you. If you do have a problem, go ahead and check the problem determination procedures now. Come back to this video program when this display is showing on your screen. In this chapter, you've learned external assembly for IBM personal computer system. You have learned about some of the adapter cards available for your computer and the difference between parallel and serial data handling. If you do have this display now, you're ready to move on to chapter four and learn about your new keyboard.